for Daniel Dubois and Joe Joyce ahead of their anticipated match. Two undefeated fighters that we're two undefeated fighters that we're hoping are going to be sharing the ring on October 24th. But before then, we've got uh, a big fight behind closed doors on Saturday and looking ahead as well to August the 29th. To August the 29th, when Daniel Dubois will face a very experienced German, Eric Pfeiffer. So before we go any further, I'll invite those fighters up to the front here. First of all, Eric Pfeiffer and uh, his translator, Errol Sealand. And promoter, and manager. All round. And now joining us as well, please, Daniel Dubois. This is a gentleman called gentleman's quarterly um, fashion show today, boys. Just in case you want to. Frank, if you'd like to uh, start this off, I mean, the obvious observation is that this is a, a very, very real fight for Daniel Dubois against a guy who's twice been a World Championship bronze medalist. He's twice performed in the Olympics, undefeated now as a pro. You didn't really have to take this, did you? No, we didn't, but uh, both the boys, Daniel and Joe, uh, by the time they do fight, which I hope they're going to fight, and you're not going to upset the odds, but by the time they fight in, uh, in October, Daniel would have been out for 10 months, and I think Joe for about, what, 14 months, isn't it? I think it was so. so they need fights. Um, obviously, we got this situation with COVID, so we looked to go to find opponents from a country that uh, we felt safe with, which was in Germany, and we've got... Eric for Daniel, it's a tough fight as you say, he's a, he's a seasoned campaigner as, as far as an amateur is concerned, two Olympic Games, I think he's beaten Tony Yoka twice in the WB, PD, BBC. BBC, he knows better than I do, uh, he's beaten him twice, so you know he's got a tremendous um, amateur pedigree, he's undefeated as a pro, seven fights, seven wins, he's a WBO European champion, and Knowing Daniel, he's undefeated. He's probably the, uh, a lot of people can sit and be you know, the outstanding young prospect in heavyweight boxing. So this is a good fight. It's a tough fight for both of them. Uh, but he doesn't flinch, Daniel. He said that he wants it. So that's what we've done. I spoke with Tony and Martin Bowers and uh, we had quite a lengthy discussion. And in the end of the day, at the end of the day, this is the opponent we settled on. But this, I don't want it to be a banana skin. And I've seen it happen before. It can go back many, many years when you look at fights big fights that were coming up and you look at like Danny McAlinden Mac years ago was going to have that big fight with Joe Bugner and, and he unfortunately got beat. Um, I remember uh, Paul Ryan who was ranked number one in the world, had a world title fight, he wanted a warm-up fight, got beat. These things happen so Daniel's got to be top of his game and for Eric he knows 100% if he was to win the fight he's in, he's, he, he, he jumps into being the, 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 the number one outstanding prospect. That's how it is. Well, before we hear from Daniel, let's uh, hear from Eric. As I say, undefeated in seven fights. We talked about the preparations, preparations for this contest. How difficult has it been training in Germany and getting ready and getting yourself up to match fitness? I have a good preparation, still, a good training. Now we start with the sparring time, but uh, also in the quarantine we find ways how I can stay uh, fit. And what does Eric think, please, about Daniel as a fighter and as a boxer? He's a good fighter, but uh, not a good boxer. <laughs> not a good boxer. Would you care to? amplify that say a little more about that from the style he say from the style he have not good amateur career and he's not uh, isn't, isn't puncher so reading between the lines do you think that you are going to get in there 
at the end of August and out box. Daniel? Thanks, so that's I will do both. I will box and fight. So you think you can outfight him as well as outbox him? Ah, right. Daniel, welcome. What's uh, your reaction hearing that? Not at all. No, nothing. You know, this is pros. This is an amateur no more. Um, I did all I, did, I needed to learn from the amateurs, and, and that skill set is going is to help me to make this fight look easy and get away with the win and a good win and uh, make a statement. How do you think that it's going to be easy? Why? What makes you think that? I'll show you in the night, but I know what I've got and, and you know, all the skills that I've just accumulated through my amateur and my professional career. And right now, when I just, you know, train is back on the way and then build momentum and, you know, showing that this is the professional business. How much have you actually seen him, Eric? How much have you been able to study him? Uh, I haven't really studied him. Uh, I, spar I remember sparring him when I was on the GB squad. That was when I was about 16. And um, we jumped in a few rounds and that's still uh, I've really seen of him. But I've seen, I've seen, I've seen of him in the amateur circuit, so I know he's been around and he's a veteran. But um, I'm going to be too young, too strong, and just use all my youth and power just to take over. And uh, tell us as well how you'll be looking on Saturday. You'll be watching Joe Joyce, of course. How, uh, how much of a problem do you think he might possibly have against Michael Vallis? Um I don't know anything about Michael Vallis. Uh, I'm going to be watching Saturday because um, we have unfinished business and I want to, you know, f you know, finish, you know, you know, complete what, what, what hasn't even finished yet and, uh, you know, get the fight on, on the way with Joe and, you know, prove I'm the better fighter. Can I ask uh, Eric what's it, what your thoughts are about fighting without a crowd, fighting behind closed doors? It's, it's look shit, but that's, that's happened. What you can do? You have to fight without crowds. But it's not good feeling. Why will it be, why will it be difficult? I like better to fight with crowd because they push me or they push the opponent. That's another, uh, that's under, uh, other feeling. Do you think it's going to affect you, Daniel? Um, no, with, with or without a crowd, I'm going to perform. So the, the idea of not having the motivation of the cheering and the partisan support, that's not going to worry you? I would definitely prefer it and, uh, to have the energy and the buzz of the audience there because that's we're gladiators and that's what we train for to entertain the audience but um, I'm, I'm still going to just do, do my business and settle it in the way. You heard Frank talk about some of the upsets of years gone by, you know you could add to that Mike Tyson losing to Buster Douglas when a match against Evander Holyfield was lined up, uh, Lennox Lewis when he was going to fight Tommy Morrison, Michael Bent goes and starches Morrison in a round, how, how worried are you just a little bit about the danger of the slip up. I'm not, you know, I'm never over under underestimate anyone, any opponent. I prepare for it like a world title fight every time I get in the ring. So that's not going to be a case at all. Frank, just uh, finishing on this one with yourself. It's uh, kind of a, a it's a learning operation all the way, isn't it, with Daniel? And he's passed every test which has been put in front of him so far. This one potentially is different again. Yeah, every, every fight is. I mean, it's uh, it's come under unusual circumstances. It's a risk fight, but with big guys, all fights are risk. You know, they throw bombs. They, you know, as you mentioned, a few uh, fights that didn't come off because of uh, the upsets. But the bottom line is, I've got confidence in Daniel, and he's got and he's got more confidence than all of us in his own ability. So it is what it is. We get the fighter beyond. The people who benefit from it are the fans again. The people who are watching it on BT, watch it live, you're going to see something, I think, a little bit special. And potentially, I know you've gone on record saying that, in your opinion, Daniel is close to a world title shot. This is, would be another step in the right direction, big time. Look, he's, got to, he's got to be Eric, 
to fight Joe to get to there. I mean, there's a lot of steps there. It's not. It's a staircase. I can, see Joe, I can see, see Joe smiling. Yeah, and Joe, of course he's smiling because he's got different. He, they got you know he got different ideas. Of course he has, and I'm sure we'll hear from that afterwards. But that's what it's all about. And you know it's a, it's a shame because we probably if it hadn't been for this epidemic, we'd be here today talking about the winner of their fight, what they were doing next. But it is what it is, and uh, and as I say, we best laid plan, plans and all that sort of stuff. But the uh, the situation is, both of them have got to get through tough opponents. We haven't gone easy on them at all. They both got tough, tough jobs in front of them. But they're good fighters. They're quality fighters, and that's what it's all about. Final word from the two guys. Then the fight on Saturday, Eric. How do you anticipate it finishing? How are you going to win? What we're going to see? He's very snobbed, uh, Daniels, Daniel Dubois and it will be uh, uh, fanatic uh, wrong that so he he will lose because he because he's so snobbed he don't understand the business he's uh, he think he's very very good but boxing is another uh, world welcome to the boxing world you've not been in that boxing world for a long time have you? <laughs> well, he's in it. so we're gonna have some real good fight these two guys are gonna put it on and they know, they know what it means for the winners. The winners of these fights are going to go on and fight for a world title. So it's, it's for everybody, they're all there to get. And they're all going to put it on the line. Daniel, more uh, excitement, more fireworks? Definitely, you're going to see a devastating performance. Uh, like every other of my fights, um, a devastating finish. So, we've got this coming up at the end of August. Before that, we've got Joe Joyce in action on Saturday and we'll uh, clear the stage now. You will have an opportunity to do one-on-one -on -one interviews, of course, with all the guys here. And, uh, and also there will be uh, a little bit of a, a face-off and a chat between Joe and Daniel before we finish today. So thank you very much for a conclusion of part one. Thanks, fellas. Thank you.